Good morning. So check out uh, what's going on here in the garden. We have a little dollar plant or silver dollar plant. This thing is about mm, thigh high, hip high. Oops. <laughs> but uh, they're beautiful and they've started coming in all over the place. Tell me that doesn't look like spring, huh? So these are usually the first ones to kind of pop their little heads up. Lunaria annua, very nice. And uh, they, they come up real quick and they have these beautiful purple flowers that end up all over the place. We're right here by the habitat. And, uh, and then they produce these little things that look like silver dollars. And they're very flat, paper thin, and they hold uh, four or five little seeds that they drop um, just all around. And then you can see the way they spread. They just drop and they're actually biennials, I think, which means they take two years to get going. Um, but you can see they're spread all about and these popped up. I mean just in a course of two or three days They they uh, first come up as green and then they just shoot up these stalks and have these beautiful purple flowers We love these little plants um, And I hope to see the bees dancing among them soon uh, Yeah, so spring is here. It's starting to dip back down in the nighttime and get a little chilly But I'm excited because we just got a big rain and uh, I can already see that some things are starting to to make the next push, the spring push. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that we can, we can do this. It's really very nice. So I was digging around the wisteria, which is starting to uh, bud, blossom, another purple. Uh, but I found a couple of those little dollar plant seeds. And look at that thing. I mean, you can see right through it. Paper thin, and it's holding just a couple little seeds. But then when they, I mean, even as I'm touching it, it's falling apart, designed or evolved to just be so delicate and this uh this i saw back here the other day and thought oh look a little seed pod and so glad i could show it um but yeah that's exactly how they do it each one of them will produce a number of ah, ah, ah. here's another one right here see how it's just dangling just above and then you get this kind of thing really pretty and of course it falls right apart just with hardly any effort at all lunaria annua Excellent. So I was talking the other day about Wisteria sinensis, and uh, it has these wonderful purple flowers that are just now starting to open up. And you can see them here starting to do their thing. But that conical sort of shape, that sort of cascading, oh, all of these are gonna open up. And that comes from something like this, which uh, is pretty strange looking. But as it opens up, and then maybe in a day or two, these will start to, to really open up and flower. But they're they're happening all over the yard, and uh, it's really cool to see Wisteria doing its thing. Although, remember, trim it back. It'll take over, God trim it back. Now, one of my favorite smells in all of springtime, it always makes me think of Easter because it happens around Easter, is the, uh, the holly plant. And uh, not a lot of people know that uh, the holly, which we have right here, um, there are varieties of it, obviously, but this one I think that we're looking at is what's commonly referred to as Chinese holly. Um, and this is uh, basically an invasive. Um, but it's got these flowers on it, which we're a little late to get to, but over the last couple of days or so, mm, it's just been smelling wonderful. It's very sweet, almost a little like, I guess, citrus or something. It's hard to describe. But uh, this leaf, someone just worked with, said you can tell Chinese holly because the leaf looks like a flying squirrel. Isn't that funny? Uh, but we can see, if you take a look, this holly is uh, climbing up here and starting to reach its way toward the, the afternoon sun, which is uh, over there. And it's putting some pressure on our juniper tree. So uh, maybe a little later today, or maybe at some point soon, I'll get out here and give this holly a bit of a trim. Um, it will definitely grow back pretty mighty. So. Uh, I won't be uh, <laughs> timid about it. So obviously um, there are all sorts of neat things that happen in the garden and they're happening all the time and they're happening while you sleep. So what's crazy is we put in this little um, lamp here, right? Last year. And this guy, <coughs> excuse me, has a little uh, solar panel sort of thing on it that uh, it gathers energy during the day and then puts off this bright little halo of light onto the ground at night. So naturally, what happened? A maple tree started growing here. And at first I thought this guy might have been some uh, blueberries 
sprouting up that I put in the ground last year, but that was just an experiment. I don't know what I'm doing growing blueberries from seed. But it's so interesting, isn't it? If you look at it, the way you can see that thing growing right toward the light. So in the daytime, it gets the sunlight. It's warming the soil, making this thing ignite. And then uh, at night, it still has light as has that stored solar energy. So naturally, it reaches for it. If you start to look, if you start to look, you can see it all around. You can see where trees grow towards street lights or vines start growing up telephone poles and reaching out toward the street light across the, uh, across the street. Uh, you can see all kinds of things. It's uh, amazing the way these lives move about the world. Now, isn't this great? <laughs> Look at that. That is one of our azalea species. There are a lot of different kinds of azalea, and so I haven't quite been able to identify the specifics of this one, but azalea nonetheless. Uh, so this is really cool. Very pretty. Azaleas all around us are starting to open up. Early in spring is when it starts to happen. We just had a day that was like 81 degrees. Also, if you remember when I made all that, uh, all those browns in the, uh, in the chipper. Um, I put them on this tarp and I covered it up and we just had a huge rain and they got a little wet and I thought, oh, the browns got soaked. But if you just give it a feel, you can see it's still very, very dry. And uh, that's the point, is that this stuff will help um, help regulate moisture. If you uh, throw this into your compost when it's a little wet, it'll help dry it out, turn it into a little more like soil. And uh, I actually need to relocate this at some point. Maybe I'll do that today. You can also probably see that all, all around us are these little yellow flowers that have fallen out of the um, Carolina jazz mine up there in one of the trees. And the wind is just blowing flowers everywhere. It smells almost a little like licorice or something sweet. It's very nice aroma, very faint. Um, so we got these azaleas coming in, very pretty. And they're these little yellow flowers that I'm actually going to attempt to sweep up or um, get the blower out and sort of collect some of them today and put them in the compost, because that is some valuable greens right there. I want to turn that into garden soil. Yeah, take a look at that little guy. So this is uh, what's been falling out of the trees. Very, hey Katie, hey Katie. It's uh, very, very pretty and it has the faintest and lightest, she likes it, <laughs> the faintest and lightest little scent Oh, it smells almost like, I don't know, like candy or something. Like lemon heads or red vines or just something so sweet that it's like, ugh, what? Um, I don't know if you can see it from down here, but way up there is where these are falling from. And uh, that vine has creeped all the way up that tree, and now its flowers are just all over the property. The world is covered in flowers. Isn't that amazing? Just look around you, they're everywhere. Unbelievable, what a gift. So another favorite of spring is this red bud here. And I know I can't get very close, but the light is hitting it very nicely. And I'm under a second one right here. Now the red bud is, uh, and I'm learning a lot of this stuff. I, I believe the word is hysteranthus, which means that uh, the flower appears before the leaf. And then, uh, oh yeah, it's growing over there as well. Just, just beautiful. All these pinks that are coming in. I also heard the other day that you can strip those buds off of the red bud uh, limbs and put them in things like muffins and baked goods. There was a, a woman uh, that uh, works down at Trees Atlanta who was telling me that she has a recipe for um, red bud flower muffins. So if that is an example of a hysteranthus, then we've got something over here, this native azalea, which is an azalea that is about to just blow open and it will have scent. It will have really nice aroma. But um, as you can see there, uh, I might be getting in there. Yeah, look at that. Very nice. This is about to open right up. Uh, but this is um, what we would call sinanthus, right? This means that Instead of hysteranthus, you have sinanthus, which means that the leaves and the flowers are appearing at the same time. These are botanical terms that I've never heard and I'm just now learning. So uh, if you see me using them incorrectly, please let me know. But um, it's really cool to learn about this sort of stuff. Is this little guy cool or what? Tiny little hyacinth doing its thing. 
just at the base of this tree. Love and life. So little and delicate. That thing's just barely the size of my finger. We are in the times of pinks and purples, y'all. What do you know about that? 